One of the, the laser mirror that they're going to set up could tell us somewhat uh, uh, whether or not this is true if the moon is going away from us, if the solar system is expanding. Columbia, this is Houston. Go ahead, over. Roger, no marks on the left that time. I did see a suspiciously small white object uh, moving forward in its car. Go ahead with the coordinates on the small white object. These are seismic experiments and the laser experiment and the solar wind experiment are all passive. They have no moving parts. They just they have no power supply. They just sit there. So theoretically, they should uh, last uh, indefinitely. And following up your other uh, subject on the formation of the moon and the three theories of it, uh, Dr. Yuri. University of California Nobel Prize winner, uh, I think is one who subscribes to that splash theory that the moon at one time came so close, as you said, the tidal waves were created and perhaps water splashed onto the moon and perhaps even contains uh, remnants of uh, protozoa and, and old life forms, which on this continent or this country or this uh, planet, of course, would have long since been destroyed, but in the... Uh, atmosphere or the lack of atmosphere around the moon, uh, if such uh, evidence exists, it would not have been destroyed, or at least that's what he hopes that uh, these lunar experiments will show, that, that they perhaps can come up with some examples of, uh, of, of life or water or moisture that at one time might have existed. He's looking forward, incidentally, to getting a hold of some of these rocks. Yes, <laughs> indeed, he is. experimented. <laughs> A lunar flyer still moving around the limb now. Armstrong has confined most of his activities to the base of the limb, working at the modularized equipment storage assembly at the Mesa. He has completed the gathering of the rock samples, as he informed Mission Control just a few moments ago. In a few minutes, we can expect Armstrong to go ahead with some of the experiments that are to be deployed, some of the other experiments, the seismic, which still must be placed on the lunar surface and the laser beam. that uh, mounted on quad one seems to be uh, bit or wrinkled right now on quad four. Uh, you're breaking up again, Buzz. Breaking up again, Buzz. I say the uh, jet deflector that mounted on quad four seems to be, uh, the surface of it seems to be more wrinkled the uh, one that's on quad one. Generally, uh, uh, underneath part of the lamp seems to have uh, stood up quite well to the uh, uh, pictures uh, in the uh, half part of the lamp that uh, illuminate uh, the thermal effects much better than, than we could uh, get them up here in the front. Roger on. I want to get uh, some particular photographs of the uh, bulk sample area in here. 
Okay. He just uh, called uh, Armstrong Neil, which uh, calls attention to a point that was brought up earlier. Since they call the two uh, spaceships by different names, Eagle, uh, Columbia, it was asked of them, how are they going to refer to each other when they're separated on the, on the moon surface like this? And uh, I think they said, well, we'll call each other by our names. <laughs> Neil and Bart. No flag. Uh, adequate. Uh, uh, light warming. Uh, fingered. Roger, and Neil has uh, 66%. O2, no flags. Minimum cooling, and the suit pressure is 382. Houston, roger out. 66% there on the PLSS, and they have been out, uh, or been on them an hour and 46 minutes. So they're not using up the oxygen too fast. Neil has finished collecting and packing the bulk sample. Uh, Buzz, this is Houston. Have you removed the close-up camera from the Mesa yet? Over. The Mesa referred to as the modularized equipment storage assembly, where the experiments and equipment are kept. now at the base of the limb, moving about with apparently no difficulty at all. They seem to enjoy the uh, ease with which they can move around on the lunar surface. Uh, here's the night of their timeline. Uh, here to be going. Roger, uh, it looks like you're about a half hour uh, Slow on it, we're working on consumables, over. All right. Both men still moving about in the vicinity of the lunar module as it rests in the southwestern corner of the Sea of Tranquility. Buzz Aldrin asked about the uh, uh, reservoir of, in his portable life support system and was informed that everything is looking good. Here's mission control. Uh, your consumables are uh, in good shape at this time. The 30 minute reference was with respect to the phenomenal timeline. Over. Roger, I understand that. Part of a life support system utilizes body heat to convert uh, the ice and the sublimator ice to convert that directly into its gaseous state, H2O, and the O part, the oxygen, is what uh, they breathe and what keeps them alive. The men have been on this system now for almost an hour and 50 minutes which means they have about 50 or so minutes to go. It appears to me they still have a lot to do before they uh, wrap up this walk on the surface of the moon. No communication now between mission control and the two flyers. It's, you know, it's just conceivable that uh, when they take off, we might get just the briefest glimpse 
of the flame coming down from the ascent engine before it severs the, the uh, power cables to that television camera because the TV camera will be left on the moon in this position. Neil's been on the surface now a slightly over an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, antennas uh, are all in place. 